Okay, my friends, Roger Mudfossil University today talking about ether. And what is ether? Well, ether is all the particles that exist in the universe everywhere. And where do they come from? They come from radiant sources, from luminous sources, from everywhere. And what do they do? They just sort of drift around. They go from here to there. We can see them. They're coming from there, obviously. They're coming from here, obviously. They're spinning and being pushed as they're scrubbing against the particles that are exist in front of them. They are all negative because electron flood theory says there is nothing but electrons and they are all negative. Now, this was always known, classical ether, until just last 100 and something years ago, 150 years ago, they decided, oh no, no, let's just test this theory and see if those particles exist. And they made some silly way of doing it, Michelson Morley, and they tried to, like, push against it with a breeze of electrons and said, oh, it didn't change it, so it, th there's no electrons there. Well, it, tr trust me, it was an insane, silly, and it, it, it's, it was wrong in every manner. So, ether and light. <clears throat> The motion of light was a long-standing investigation in physics for hundreds of years before the 20th century. The use of ether to describe the motion was popular during the 17th, 18th centuries. It's just sort of, it was ether, it just sort of drifted around, and that's exactly correct. Exactly correct. And not only is there ether in, in the space, what we call the vacuum, which is nothing more than light particles. They're coming from every single direction and they fill there and they are particles they are not nothing and i can prove that because of this right here the sun is only six thousand degrees on its surface outside the corona way out there is millions of degrees on the earth is only 90 degrees or so you know on the surface in that area and it's over 2700 degrees out way out where it scrubs against it they we have a, a, a atmosphere that's basically collected on here. It's sort of fluid, but it moves with us as we spin through space. And that is outside range of that envelope of atmosphere scrubs through this, which is all the particles emitted from the sun and from every other luminous body in the universe. The sun does the same thing. We're all scrubbing through at the same time. So that's why it's millions out here and 6,000 here. Just scrub your hands you got heat where you're, because uh, same thing here, electrons against electrons. There is nothing that exists that doesn't have electrons surrounding it, because there is nothing that exists that is not electrons. And that, my friends, is electron flood theory. These are the only particles that exist, shown it dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Time for someone to respond. 1837 of those particles make up what they would call a proton. 1838 make up what they would call a neutron. Two together, back to back, make up what they would call a photon. And a hydrogen is made up of a ball of them, of these electrons. And one more that wants to get in, but this says, no, nope, we got just enough, stay just that far away. And it says, I want to get in there, stay that far away, and if somebody leaves, you can come in. That's how quantum mechanics works. Now this is the important part. This is all about heat thermochemistry. I, like I say, I did this a very long time. This is not, this is not my first rodeo. And it, it all ended up being resonance and then... Oh, where are we here? This is an important part. Okay, there's oh, two types. There's two types of inter intermolecular forces and they're dipoles. Dipole to dipole reactions. Now what else we got here? Then it goes into different types of bonding and all that business. And down here, you know, this is a lot to this. Uh, and this is where we get into the chemistry and how all of these things react in molecular forms. And uh, and again, it gets it gets pretty detailed. And uh, it comes out at the end here. Hydrogen spectrum. Oh, right, here we go. This is the bottom line right here. Transfer of energy from light to atomic vapor. 
That is ether. I know that a zillion years ago, and I have been trying to prove this until today, and I'm proving it today. Okay, I've shown this many, many times, so I'm going to run through it real quick. That is standard light from a pulse red laser. Very simple construction laser. Bup, 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 bup. And only the light is right there in the center. Everything else is glowing because it's being concussed as that center particle comes through. Now here, we ran it through Rod, Ventura, Rod Warren created a Venturi, which is two metal drums here. And the light has to pass through there in this airplane wing sort of restriction, which is called a Venturi. And it, as it does, it forces the light to compact and accelerate. And you can see it's accelerating. It's pulling itself out of the wave. That is the particle. The whole wave here is nothing more than just like if you took a jet fighter and went through the atmosphere and, and it concusses everything as it comes around. It, it, the, the wings aren't way out in the sides. The wings are way in here, but the whole thing has to get out of the way in a wave, and that's what happens here. Now, but it is a particle, and that particle spins. And I'll show you this in very good detail. Now, here is where we find the electron flood theory you know, the, the, the particle power. And here's the power. You've got a black and a white. Now, I'm showing a black and a red because the background is white, but this would normally be black and white. Now, when that concusses with something, it's going flying through there because it's light. When it's going flying through there and it concusses, only the, the, the power one, which would be normally white, explodes. The black one just sort of rolls around with it and doesn't explode. It's a carrier. It's, it's a, 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 it seems to have just enough energy to hold on to that particle until it concusses with something, and that baby explodes like a hand grenade. Now, that's what we're talking about. Electrons are these, and they make up 100% of the universe. 100%. Not a single thing there is is not made of electrons. That's my statement. Radiation is nothing more than particles that are different size moving. Some of them are big particles, some of them are little particles, some of them are electrons, some of them are photons, some of them are cosmic rays and ultraviolet radiation. They're normally, I believe, they're larger and larger particles. Okay, and they get to a certain point and then they're, you know, nuclear radiation. Now, all energy is electron push to shove. That's all it is. So when you take, and you're supposed to have 23,012 particles here. And let's say that is uranium, whatever it is. But it's got 21,018. Well, you've got a problem here. Some of them are either going to go out, or some of them are going to combine together. You're going to have... You're going to have interactions, a particle decay, they call it. And when they decay, they usually break down into smaller, more stable units. But they give off something. When they do, that's what you get hit with. That's nuclear radiation. Now, so you have your basic electron is that. Your basic photon is this. And when that photon concusses, you get spikes coming out the ends, and we'll see those. Your basic charged particle carrier is the gauge boson. And your basic explosive particle is the fermion, and that was the one that was attached to the carrier. Okay, this is the, these are the top people, the Royal Institution in London, 714,000 subscribers. They're deep into particle physics. This is the same stage, I believe, that Mendeleev made his statements on. Now listen to this. That we found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. Okay, and that's, that's true. And others have also found that same situation. Now, this only goes back a couple of months ago. Uh, and it's, it's called lepton universality. And what it means is there was only a certain number of particles that are supposed to exist. And here they are right here these quarks and so forth. And, and six types of leptons. Okay. Three of these leptons are charged, three of them are neutral. All right, now this is it. That's the, that's the, 
the particles are supposed to exist depend because of the Bohr model and Einstein and Marley Morris and all these people now. All of a sudden they're finding tons of zillions of different particles, which they've always found because there is a bazillion different isotopes. And what it ends up being is that there's, there's no way they can account for those, just as she says. Okay, here's some more evidence, and again, this is just within the last couple of months. Weird electron positrons from decaying beryllium or helium hint at new boson. And, and they say new boson appears in nuclear decay break standard model. This is not something that is unknown now. So now they have to come up with a new, a new theory of how the nucleus works. And electron flood theory is that new theory. I showed it before. That's all there is. Now I say that's an electron, but really what it is, it's got both par charges, but the, the one side of it has an explosive charge, the other side is just a carrier. Let me show you that. And I've had a ton of videos on this, so there's no reason I have to go over and over this. I've got them all on my site. And we have some fabulous new shots. I don't think anybody has anything like this. This is light being accelerated. That is the Higgs bosons coming out at us in different varying intensities, which gives is a, puts a whole new slant on things. Now, this is a particle that appears to be smaller than light, or it's doing some form of a decay. That particle came through and was white when it came through the accelerator and concussed with one of these waves and, and turned into that. Now, this is the particle we're talking about, which is the photons. Now you see the up and down, black and white, black and white. Only the white has a charge. The blacks don't have a charge. They just hold on to the white and they go with them. And then and when the white explodes, the blacks just roll around on their own. They stay out of the mix. I'll show you that. Very interesting. And you can see the spikes coming up top and bottom. See these in green too. And uh, this shows that the light is spinning to the right, drifting to the left, it, you know, uh, compressing as it goes along obviously that means it's slowing down uh, and and they do speed up very significantly through that accelerator you can see it i mean it's zip, it's just pulling itself right out of itself all right and all the rest of this stuff is ether that's all ether within our own atmosphere here just like i said static electricity collects on you right to ground it wasn't attached to anything it was all extra stuff just laying around out there that is what heat and cold does. Heat is when you force those into something. Cold is when they leave out of there and go to somewhere else which is warmer that wants them more than where they were. That's all it is. It's migration of these tiny little particles. These tiny little particles. And they concuss when they are thrown away from their when they're so excited, they they go flying, then they create power like this. Now, let's see the, the gauge bosons. All right, prepare because I'm going to close it up very quick. There's that particle stream accelerating, crushing into each other. Well, each one of those is a particle. You see those little black spots? Those are those black dots that were attached to the white ones. Well, the white ones explode. They have a region around them. The black one just seems to not control a region. It just controls the white one. It says, come with me. When we get to where you're going to explode, I'll just stand out of the way. See them? They're all over. They're all over. They're black ones. They're still dots. They look exactly the same. But look at what happened to the white. Totally different situation. And these stripes are not overlapping this is only a single slit and it's it's shaped like this comes in like this and comes in and it pinches right in the center and because these own huge regions they have to crush into each other's re now they are plasma now if we did this with heavy particles when they came through here and they you know you start well out with a batch of them like this and they explode into bazillions of little pieces when they come back together instead of being heavy hydrogens they come back to helium which is a, le a more stable lower state they would throw off a ton of electrons and that is a ton of heat electricity however you harvest it there's different ways of harvesting these vapors because this would be a vapor that's what i talked about before a vapor 
Ether is a vapor, and we could create a vapor of electrons. That's what I'm saying.